In this video, I'm going to do a hard split or a half and half on this stingless beehive. So I've been doing a lot more soft splits, but this is a great opportunity to show you a hard split. And a hard split is when you take the bottom from one hive and add a new top, and then you take the top from that hive and add a fresh bottom. So you turn one hive into two. It's fallen a bit out of favour with some folks, but I still think it's fine. As long as you do it properly, I've found it to be fairly safe. Um, other people have different opinions on that, but anyway, I'll show you how I do it here today. In terms of equipment, I'll be using a hive tool, some tape, some leftover propolis. This step isn't necessary, but I find it very useful to help the bees defend the new bottom. And of course, an empty hive. You can see I've already used the propolis to add an entry, um, just a bit of propolis around the entry on the outside and the inside, and it just gives the bees that extra bit of protection on the brand new bottom half. This is the current hive design I use. Um, you can see I've only had a couple with this design, but you'll see the hive I'm splitting from is my old design, and you'll see the slight or subtle difference as we split between them. Just to give you a quick overview of the hive, it's got a lid, which is just an empty top. It's got the middle box. Now this is with all the working parts. You can see it's got a perspex lid. And on the back half of that perspex lid, there's actually, oh, you'll see it from underneath, there's actually a gap at the back. Um, that's the honey super sale ideas from Tim Hurd. You leave a gap at the back because the bees tend to leave their honey at the back, or store their honey at the back of the hive. And so technically they might fill the top with honey. Then I've got what used to be my dry split separators, um, idea taken from Bob Luttrell, who took it from people in Brazil, I believe. Um, I no longer do the two dry split separators, I just use the one, and these are leftovers. When I eventually run out of these, I'll have just a, a middle section with a single hole in the middle and a gap front and back, just for ease. Um, but I've still got these left, so I'm gonna keep using them. So that's my mid box, and then just the bottom box. You can see, there's where I put some propolis on the inside. The bees tend to make a tube going up on the inside of the hive for protection. So you can see I've sort of shaped the start of that to give them a head start. Um, on the bottom, I've got four stainless steel screws for feet. Also not my idea. And the wood I use is a um, structural hardwood. I just like it for longevity. Um, I did like the appearance when I was varnishing, but then I had problems with varnish lasting long term. So I've started painting them, obviously. Size is 240 by 240 external dimensions of the square. And then the bottom and mid box are both 90 mil with the lid being 70 mil, or the lid slash honey super being 70 mil. The wood I'm using is 35-ish millimeters thick. And just to briefly explain why you saw this tape here, I got this idea from a video I saw recently of Tim giving a talk on, on beehive splitting. Uh, I've never actually done this. Usually I would just leave this open, but it is a good idea because I don't have a, a viewing panel on this style of hive. I can have a separate lid and have a viewing panel, but I don't on this one. What I what his idea was, and I'm, I'm trying it now, is to put tape across the gap between the mid box and the honey super. And because you've got this top bit as the clear plastic, I can now use that as a viewing panel um, while the, the hive's still young. And as soon as it starts to fill up, I can just lift the lid off, take this tape off, put the lid back on, and then they can fill the rest of the box. So I've got the tape on for now for that purpose. It just reduces the volume of the box. And then it's really just as simple as you would imagine. You can see the bees are already starting to investigate the other box. I haven't even split them yet. Um, so my old style does have the dry split separator and you'll see that in a moment. So I'll take the lid off our new box, or the top box of our new box, and I'll put this here, ready to go. And then I'm splitting the old box. It has the same dry split separator you saw in the mid box, and then I used to use a second one, full width of the box underneath it. I actually have um, a video where I talk about this old hive design, so I'll link that uh, down below if you're interested. But this should create a very clean division if it comes away cleanly it doesn't always which is one of the reasons I um, 
I'm not so concerned with them anymore. As you can see, it's come away with the box here. And so you can see we've got quite a lot of brood. That's not a perfect split. Um, but we do have quite a lot of brood in the top box with the old dry split separator and quite a lot of brood in the bottom box. And then it's as simple as going half half. Trying not to squish too many bees. I will leave that dry split separator on there just because I don't want to cause any more harm than is necessary for the split by doing the split. Okay, and now I can actually check on that hive through the top and that looks excellent. Okay, the last step I actually do is I put a strip of tape around where the join is. Um, with some of the very more with some of the trickier hive designs, you don't actually need this step, but with mine you do. Uh, it just adds a bit of protection for the bees. Stops some of the pests they get here in Southeast Queensland from getting into the hives. You can see now there's bees going into both sides straight away. Um, one of the questions that people often ask is, how far do you have to move the hive away? And the answer is you don't actually have to move the hive away. So they can stay right beside each other. And sure, there's going to be some confusion at first. You'll have bees going in either one. Um, but both hives should be fine. Just pull this one away slightly. This builder's tape doesn't, uh, sorry, this painter's tape doesn't last very long outside, but that's the idea. Um, I sometimes use this fancier electrical tape, but it can be quite difficult to get off and um, leaves a sticky residue, which is easy to clean off with a bit of eucalyptus oil, but it can damage the paint. out little guys And you can see how that observation window works. Actually, this is really cool. I don't know how clear this is on video, but you can see this is actually the advancing front of the brood. So with stingless bees, they start building at the bottom of the hive and slowly build up. And then underneath the brood has matured and is hatching. And then once it gets to the top of the hive, they'll start at the bottom again. And so you've got this constant advancing front following hatching brood. Now, I can actually see where this is broken. It's broken quite cleanly. And the brood, there's a lot of open pots. So that suggests to me that this was the advancing front. I'll bring you in for a closer look. So in terms of a hard split, I'm actually really happy with how that one went. Um, I'm confident that they will be successful. 
but I, I do do less of these nowadays because it, it can be damaging to the hive and I, I prefer to do the soft splits when I can but I don't really have a problem with with uh, doing hard splits so I hope you found that interesting and if you didn't know how the process worked hopefully this made it a bit clearer for you thanks for watching